Uh, so AI's got telepathy. Let's read a paper. Okay, so there's this paper that came out on the 20th, which addresses something called the platonic representation hypothesis. So basically, AIs think like this. This is the shape of their thoughts. What it learns to do is figure out the distance between two concepts. Two and three are close by. Kazoo and giraffe are really far apart. What part of the AI does, the variational autoencoder, is it tries to figure out where exactly in the space and exactly how far apart are two concepts. The thing is, they all learn different shapes. They're all exposed to data in a different order. And they're all exposed to different data. Which means they can't really share spaces. They can't talk directly with their thoughts. Except that we figure out how to get them to. The paper originally came out, uh, written by this guy back in, like, last summer. This one, uh talks about how do we get to a universal encoding. So these are two language models that don't share the same brain structure, and then this is how we got them to share a brain structure, basically. Or really, it just maps thought to thought. This is a big deal uh, in terms of security because a lot of people thought that when they were uh, generating embeddings, they were generating something that completely obfuscated the data except to the language model. Basically, that they were putting it inside the language model's like brain structure, and so no one else could get that information out, which is not the case. I use Kaggle. I, when I teach AI, I use this website called Kaggle. On it, people will post real data of like real customers, like credit card transactions, but they've embedded those transactions into a vector space so that you can't really de-anonymize it. Except that now you can. And there's actually a lot of stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of databases where it was basically assumed, uh, and data sets where it was basically assumed that if we put these into vectors, someone will not be able to get the actual customer data back out. Turns out you can. Also, you don't need any, like, labeled data. You don't need to know some of the embedding space to figure it out. You can just do vec to vec. And it's a small model. It'll run on your laptop. So this is kind of a dire cybersecurity problem in terms of all of the open data sets that are out there for people to learn uh, machine learning with are basically de-anonymized now. Also, all of the methods of taking PII and stripping it out and turning it into something that's uh, not uh, identifiable, yeah, that's that's now not a, not a thing. It's a little bit like a mirror neuron layer form ML models. It's like a telepathy mirror neuron layer. That's essentially what we built. That probably won't come back to bite us. You know. Have you seen that one video where the AIs like switch to Jabber Talk, where they like both realize they're AIs and they switch to Star Wars droid language? This is like a way faster and low effort version of that. But it does help a lot in terms of interpretability, which is a major alignment problem.